You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, one of the cliffhangers from the final January 6th committee hearing was that a witness was counseled to lie. CNN just reported that um, Trump's White House ethics lawyer, because of course, uh, counseled Cassidy Hutchinson to mislead the committee. Why is this especially important? You know, this is a really big deal. People may just say, well, you know, it's another charge that they're throwing on the pile. But let me tell you, witness tampering is treated differently in the criminal justice system. It's viewed very differently by prosecutors. You know, courts decade after decade all say the same thing about uh, witness tampering, which is a form of obstruction of justice. They say witness tampering strikes right at the heart of the integrity of the criminal justice system. I mean, think about it. A citizen who gets involved as a witness and is asked to do his or her civic duty, um, the thanks they get for it is they get tampered with, they get threatened, they get counseled to lie to protect the perpetrator. You know, witness tampering in some ways is a crime in a league of its own. And there are three really important benefits to prosecutors um, when we learn that a witness has been tampered with. Uh, The first is that it is a separate independent crime. So the J6 committee referred Donald Trump for prosecution to the Department of Justice for four crimes. The insurrection, check. Conspiracy to commit offenses against or defraud the United States, check and obstructing an official proceeding, the certification of Joe Biden's win, check. But then there was this sleeper referral that I don't think there was any advanced reporting that the J6 committee would also be making a criminal referral for witness tampering. More precisely, um, the, the crime that they told the Department of Justice, they had enough evidence to refer Donald Trump for prosecution on was conspiracy to make a false statement, basically a conspiracy to urge a witness to lie. We have since learned from the CNN reporting that the person who Donald Trump conspired with, at least one of them, was his White House ethics counsel. I mean, irony, anybody? Um, A guy named uh, Stefan Passantino. So the reason that this is different, it's different in quality than the other crimes is because, as I say, it's a separate crime, so it carries with it a separate potential prison term. But it also informs the evidence of every other crime. What do I mean by that? Well, if a witness's truthful testimony will not incriminate you, then there is no need to tamper with that witness. But if the witness's testimony is damaging to you, is incriminating to you, That's when you tamper with the witness and you try to get the witness to lie to assist the perpetrator. So witness tampering has the benefit of providing um, consciousness of guilt evidence for every other crime that will ultimately be charged against Donald Trump. So it's kind of a, a twofer crime. And then the third reason it's so important is because they didn't just say that Donald Trump tampered with a witness. They didn't just say that Stefan uh, Passantino tampered with a witness. They said Donald Trump was involved in a conspiracy to make false statements to Congress. What does that mean? Well, that means two or more people had to agree to commit the crime of witness tampering. And that gives the prosecution a huge opportunity to flip a guy like Stefan. I can't imagine Stefan is going to want to spend much of the rest of his life in prison when he can cut a deal with the prosecutors. He can. Now, now listen, Stefan needs to go to prison because not only did he tamper with a witness, he tampered with a witness he was representing. He was Cassidy Hutchinson's lawyer and he was counseling her to lie to benefit Donald Trump. That is a special kind of sin in legal circles. So now Uh, He'll have the opportunity to come on board, be a cooperating witness, flip against Donald Trump and perhaps reduce the prison time he's facing. Okay, so on that point, at what point do you not need more witnesses to flip against someone like Donald Trump when all of the evidence that you already have is already so compelling? So, listen, prosecutors are looking to take a maiden legal voyage right against a former president who committed crimes against the United States. What I can tell you, even in the run of the mill case, Brian, when I was investigating a case in the grand jury, 
if I had three witnesses who provided incriminating evidence of, about my target, I was looking for a fourth. If I had four, I wanted five. I wanted to build the strongest case I could possibly build. Never is that more important than when you're building a case against a former president. You can't build a perfect case. You can't build a bulletproof case. But, you know, when do the prosecutors have enough evidence? Well, we know they have enough evidence to indict him, but they need to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the highest evidentiary burden known to the law. It's way up there. So, you know, I don't know that they're ever going to feel like they have enough evidence, but they're going to continue to try to develop cooperating witnesses. They're going to continue to try to flip people against Donald Trump to build the strongest case they can possibly build. But they're doing this knowing that they're relinquishing people who who've already broken the law. And so so I guess is it I guess is it worth it for them? And I, and I feel like the answer is yes, but worth it for them to continue sacrificing prison terms for these people who deserve it all in deference of of getting Donald Trump. Is, is that correct? Yeah, it's a really tough balance to strike. You know, my entire career as a prosecutor, I always said my most difficult decisions uh, involved how much prison time to ask for for a cooperating witness because just because you bring somebody like a stefan passantino on board you flip him so he can provide incriminating information against donald trump that does not mean he escapes prison right it might mean he reduces his exposure from let me just throw out a number 10 years to five years if he fully and truthfully cooperates against Donald Trump. But these people should not get a pass because of the offenses they committed against the United States, against our democracy. They need to do prison time. But let's face it, we also need to work our way up the criminal chain. So we're going to have to use the Stefans of the world to build stronger cases against the Trumps of the world. Got it. Perfectly put. Um, so now with regard to Stefan Passantino, what are the consequences? What's the range of consequences that he's facing right now? So conspiracy to do anything is generally a five year offense. Conspiracy to make a false statement. Um, but that that is only a charge for openers, because if he was involved in a conspiracy to try to get Cassidy Hutchinson to lie to protect Donald Trump, you know, he was involved in any other crimes. I suspect a conspiracy to defraud the United States, a conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding and perhaps the insurrection as well. So there are lots of crimes in play. It really depends on what Jack Smith determines um, Stefan's criminal exposure is, how many crimes he committed. And that will dictate uh, ultimately what Stefan Passantino's Pas uh, maximum punishment may be. Okay. And I guess the last thing that I was going to ask, which I, which I feel like you did answer to some degree already, is how this hurts Trump specifically in the special counsel's case against him. But I feel like the answer is going to be to some degree that if there was a conspiracy, um, if there was a conspiracy to lie or to defraud and he was involved in it, the other, con the other member conspiring is going to be Donald Trump. And so this is the whole consciousness of guilt that Passantino uh, is involved in because it's a conspiracy also involves Donald Trump. This consciousness of guilt that arises from the conspiracy to tamper with a witness is like a river that runs through all of the other criminal charges against Donald Trump. And you know what? The fact that it looks like the prosecutor will now have that powerful consciousness of guilt evidence that should embolden even the most timid prosecutor, even the most weak need prosecutor. And let me be clear, I'm not suggesting Jack Smith can be put in the timid or weak need category. It remains to be seen, but he's got some bona fides uh, of bringing really difficult politically charged cases against Republicans and Democrats and CIA employees and others. So, but this will embolden and almost demand prosecution now that we know that Trump and company were tampering with witnesses to try to get away with their democracy busting crimes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll leave it there. Obviously, uh, you know, more mob tactics from a, a quasi mob boss. So um, as we continue to hear new developments from that case, I would ask the people watching right now, if you want to get more updates, make sure to subscribe to both of our channels. The links are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Teller Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.